everybody and welcome back uh uh to the torch hey it's day dun 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 sorry if i sound a little tired bum 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 okay so this episode is going to be a little bit of a mixture uh between voiceover and normal commentary uh reason being while I was trying to record, it was extremely noisy, we'll say. So I ended up just recording um, without having my voice and figured, eh, I'll do a voiceover later, which I'm doing as soon as I wake up. So, <laughs> so if I sound a little bit tired, that would be the reason. And also, in case you're curious what that sound sounded like, uh, well, my mic picked it up, so here you go. Well, I'm probably gonna add this to the video. <laughs> how do you even, how do you even do that? Huh. Oh well. Alrighty, well, now that we know what that sounded like, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take out the Corsair as one of our starting people um, that we're gonna go ahead and level up. For this episode, I figured that it would probably be best if we sent out quite a few people uh, in order to level up because yeah, we kind of need more people uh, leveled up which you know what a state doesn't um, so we bring out the Corsair, the Chimera, the Courtier and the Plague Doctor and don't worry I did not forget to lower the torch this time But our first battle is up against two Nami boys, as well as a leech. Now the leech is, he can be a little bit dangerous. Um, my thinking here was we may as well buff up, get a little bit of stress healing right away, and just sort of see what we can manage. If we can land a bleed on him, he's going to transfer that to one of his buddies, so I opt to go ahead and just buff up ourselves. for another buff just because I was debating shuffling him backwards but decided it would overall be a bad idea. We're gonna go ahead and move forward. <clears throat> so now he's dead to bleed. Uh, we get a really nice five damage off from the Cordia who he doesn't do a lot of damage but we, we do end up dodging the Grave Nibble luckily for us. We get a tiny bit of healing although as I quickly found out, this this team has no healing. Like, at best, we can heal for maybe four health. Like, at absolute best. But let's like, take out the maggot before he can start uh, doubling up on his stats, getting some healing. You know, getting decently straight. I mean, he's still a maggot, so it's not really a whole lot to worry about, but we do have a, <clears throat> we do have a lot of stress healing on this team, except for that crit, which gave us Eldritch Blood. Now, Eldritch Blood actually seems like a good disease, except for that plus 20% stress, but overall, it seems pretty good. So, because of Plague Doctor, we're able to cure the bleed, cure the blight, and then we return that 12 crit us. Now this team was also lacking on damage. Uh, it was pretty common that reinforcements were showing up, which it wasn't exactly good. But as we went ahead and got farther into the dungeon, we came across this boy. Now this guy, you know, he wasn't really too much of a threat. Uh, he just kept missing his little poke, so I really wasn't too intimidated by him, so we went ahead and left him for last. Which was a huge mistake, because he has a massive uh, team-wide AoE, so 
The fact we left him for last was actually a really, really bad mistake. We do get a 14 crit with the bleed, though, so I mean, that's pretty good. Um, the Chimera does have a 100% uh, crit chance versus bleeding uh, when using a move that turns him into a crocodilian, so luckily for us, that really works out when someone else on the team has a bleed. Uh, we go for a tiny bit of a heal here because the Chimera is going to put a region on everybody at the end of the battle, like that. So whoever we healed didn't really matter. But we got through the dungeon pretty easily. Um, I'd say stress was pretty high despite how much stress healing we were actually doing. Uh, we get quite a bit of gold, nearly 8k. And... meh. But with that being said, we do find a new buddy in the stagecoach, which we're not able to take because we don't have enough room. But then I decide to go to the mountains because I figured, you know what? We got a pretty strong team here. We got the Count. He's got the Mountaineer's Pickaxe, the Bleed Amulet, the Mountaineer's Journal, which is a pretty, pretty strong combo, actually. Or at least I think so. Uh, he's got pretty good abilities. He's got a stealth just in case he gets in any danger. We do bring the the Abyssal Hunter, who is actually quite strong. I may not know how to use her perfectly yet, but she is fairly strong. Um, if we use her quick stab, it does make it a lot easier, but it does remove the high roll potential. So it's kind of a it's kind of a mixture thing that you gotta decide like. Do I want the high rolls? Do I want to just get uh, the mediocre damage? Or do I want to take the gamble? Which, if you know anything about my luck, <laughs> we're not going to take that gamble. We also bring two healers, which might be a mistake, but I remember this place having a lot of damage, so I figured that two, uh, two healers would probably be best. We are also able to summon the Sun Mirage, which he is going to give us plus 10 torch whenever we use him, but eh, that's not really going to affect us too much. We come across this really strange formation, which when we looted it, gave us a lot of goodies. So I was actually quite happy about that. 375 gold. on little stabby boy in the front um we are not able to summon our sunrise so i go ahead and just uh put on 18 white aoe healing aoe healing dot healing um now this team is the team we're up against <coughs> is extremely nasty so we're gonna go for a stun on um, the madman now the offering does have a barrier which is really annoying but, um, I do make a little bit of a, a little tiny bit of a mistake here, after getting a 13 crit directly onto this. We do not end up focusing the two correct people. heal there. I definitely should have just gone for the single target on the uh, count. Don't know why I didn't, but at least I'm able to say that after the fact. Now we do land a kill on who I thought was the priority target. Uh, you got me while I was focusing him, but to be fair, this is like my third ever time to the mountain, so I don't really know what to focus quite yet. But it turns out the totem is actually a thrall. Yeah. I don't know why. But a bit later on, 
we do end up finding another strange formation, which I was more than happy to loot, because I could use some more loot. However, it was an ambush. Now, later on in the dungeon, this is where I feel like I'm going to get a little bit complaining. So, I, I genuinely think, this is one of the fights that made me think it. And, to be fair, I probably misplayed this quite bad. Not to mention, uh, two negative, uh, two, two afflictions. But see, he did 14 damage, he got poked, it's another turn, does another 13 damage. This is a level 1 dungeon, and he's done close to 30 damage in a single turn, when most heroes, you know, around the level 1 mark, have around 20 health. That is ridiculously high damage. Like, the average, I want to say, of all the base is about 20 at level 1. Um, luckily, we do get focused. But this is, this is one of the fights I was, you know, when I do actually start talking in the commentary, you can hear it in my voice. I'm, I'm pretty PO'd because essentially my main complaint, and I can say this after the fact, not, not that I've collected my thoughts, so to speak, there are just so many high priority targets. Yeah, that was pretty painful, leaving him at one health, because now he gets to do a giant AoE. Woo! Oh. Literally one health, and then he got to blow up. So annoying. We do get a, an, an Affliction Bark there. Uh, we try to go for a really big amount of damage. Sadly, it doesn't quite work out for us. Um, I try to summon a Sun Boy just so he can help us out a little bit, which he does. He does manage to get one damage and no blight, but yeah, every little bit of damage counts. That's one damage we wouldn't have had otherwise. Now we do, he does end up dodging. The prod actually works in our favor this time because it kills him. But my biggest complaint is if there's a corpse at the end of the turn, she pulls the um, Hateful Virago, where she can summon it, but not only is it a free turn, she also does damage and stuns during that free turn. So she has a mark, a stress, a buff, a revive, and she's always going to be in the back. So if you bring a frontline team, good luck. Not to mention the uh, prod boy. He can give an extra turn. He has a stun. I think he has a bleed too, but don't quote me on that one. And then there's also the totem, which has a guard, has a stun, and has the thrall explosion. And then, as if that wasn't bad enough, in a level one dungeon, they also all have an average of about 20% protection. All of them. So I don't know. I, I feel like the I feel like the mountain could use a little bit of balancing. The enemies there, you know, I could just be a big baby. Maybe I maybe it's my fault because I brought two healers. Not that it helped. But it just feels like the enemies there are way too strong. There are way too many priority targets. Like, if we look at the base game people, enemies, they have an average of, like, one to three attacks, whereas, like, the special enemies have, like, maybe four, yeah, about four at best, whereas she has, like, nearly five moves herself, and then the totem has, like, three moves itself, which isn't that bad, in all honesty, three moves is fine, but... I don't know. Now we head into a new dungeon with some uh, interesting characters. 
Not sure if they're going to be very good, but we bring the frozen corpse with the Mountaineer's pickaxe, the cherished keepsake, cold shock, true ice blade, frozen shard, and winter wonderland. Sally, the goblin huntress, with the Mountaineer's pickaxe, uh, buckshot, riot control, decimate, and suppression. Unnamed, the legion banner bearer, with no trinkets. Legion Rally, Legion Brace, Legion Aim, and Enchanted Dagger. And then, of course, we finish it off with Zelethar, the Legion Necromancer, with Necrotic Stitch, Cursed Blast, Harvest, and Hex Maniac. Uh, I don't think this team is going to be very good. I'm expecting somebody to die. Probably the Frozen Corpse, because every single move he has... Gives him minus 50% healing received. He also has no blight resistance, no bleed resistance. And this ability, which is going to be our party heal, is going to do bleed damage. Which, is, since he has no way to resist it, is a little bit of a problem. Well, off to a great start. Literally the first fight, and uh, we already have somebody who's about half health. Um, we are going to go for Cursed Blast, try and get a stun. We do land the double stun, which is actually really, really nice. Now, I'm thinking what we're going to do, we're going to go for Legion Aim. It's going to go ahead and help everybody to buff up. It does mark KM, which is kind of an unfortunate side effect, but do what you got to do. Um, thinking of going for Cold Shock, although we're going to end up going for True Ice Blade, and we're going to hit Mr. Guardian. He also does damage to himself every time he uses a move. So I really think the Frozen Corpse, we could probably do without him. I, I think he's actually a really not good character, we'll call it. Uh, my, my reason for that should be pretty self-explanatory. He does damage to himself. He reduces healing. He has absolutely no resistances to dots. It, you know... It's unfortunate, because you want to use the big space boy, but all in all, I think he's just, he's bad enough to the point where he's pretty much a joke character. We'll, uh, we'll call it that. Well, that's not surprising. Yeah, um... I like the witch class mods, but <laughs> this episode is me basically discovering things that I really am not a fan of, we'll say. Okay, so I did, uh, I, I decided it's probably best that we let the witches' corpse, legion, and templars all go. So I went ahead, there's, they'll still be in the collection in case you guys want to use them, but I, I really don't think they're for me. Um, yeah, that's the long and short of it. I, I, I just, I don't think they're for me. I haven't been enjoying them too much, so there you go. That's, <laughs> that's kind of it. I have, really don't have much to say about it besides that. Um, we did get the fool in our state. We also have a new friend in the, uh, stagecoach. Two of them, in fact. And with that, we can pretty much go back to leveling. Um, I We might take out the Hive with the Chosen. We'll see. His idle stance right here looks really, really bizarre. I'm not sure if it's supposed to look like this, but it's, uh, it's, a, little, it's a little strange. Just a tiny bit. Alrighty, we are in. We bring Celeste the Stars with the Cherished Keepsake, all of her abilities. 
I cashed the Stargazer with the Mountaineer's Pickaxe, the Brass Sextant, the Moon Rabbit Natsuki, all of his abilities, Vladimir the Voivode with Treats and Tasty Bites, Bleed Amulet, and all of his abilities, and then Lyra the Falconer with nothing. Uh, qu quick shot, crippling shot, eye thief, ravage, volley, flyer, flurry. I said it wrong, but I just went with it that time. Fleeting escape and harrier. We are here to kill the necromancer, and we'll also get a really good dark spawn trinket if we manage to pull it off. Well, we ran into a mad jester, but luckily we're just so good that he stood no chance. Killed him on turn two. That's actually pretty good. Oh, and we know where the boss is, so this dungeon is going ex excruciatingly well. Like, no, we can't hit him, but we can get a little bit of a stress heal, and then we can just whack him like that. He still didn't die. Now we do. Alright, we open up the Necromancer fight. And of course, he opens up with quite a bit of stress, which... What do you expect from the Necromancer? That's just kind of the thing that he wants to do. Now, my thinking here is let's go ahead and power up. We do a Holy Water just to protect her a little bit. Now we're going to power up. We're going to get some big damage. Plus 50%. Here we go. 11 damage. That's okay. I mean, yeah, 11 damage when he's got so much. It, it, yeah, it's okay. We do pull him forward, attempt to go for the stun. Sadly, the stun does not work out. We go ahead and mark him. My reasoning being, I would like to set up a bleed, but then I remembered, oh, I don't have adapt on. So, marking him is just going to act as extra damage. We do go for a little bit of damage here. It shuffles him back, which is an eh, unintended consequence, we'll say, because now he's at the very back again. Luckily, because of that mark, we are going to be able to land a 12 hit on him, which is really not bad at all. He does go for the, the flesh is willing, which eh, he can do a lot of damage. It really just depends. Now, we're not able to hit him, so I just try and go for a little bit of damage. We do take him out, shuffle him just a little bit forward. Reason being, we don't want him to have three dudes up at the same time. It will not go well for us, thanks to Vinny's rework. We do get a really nice 12 damage, which does give us a self-stun, which is unfortunate. He does get a, a starting to stack up that damage on the front, too, even despite her uh, high amount of protection. So I'm thinking that, I'm almost thinking that that move ignores protection. We do take one guy out, get a crit, and get a little bit of damage, so that was, wow, that's ultimate value right there. He gets a bit more stress, as he does. We decide to go for a Galaxy Smash, which does do a lot of damage, so that is really, really nice. He gets a Boatman Stance up, that's gonna be a repost. We go for the triple hit again because it takes one guy out, does a little bit of damage to the other two. He goes for another six feet under, which is more stress. I end up going for the guard, mainly because I want the repose and I don't want him to take too much damage. He does get off Rally the Corpses, which is a nasty, nasty buff. It's plus accuracy plus damage. Which, you really don't want him to pull that off. Also, you see that? I just did 19 damage to my own guy. You want to know the chances that we do 19 damage to our own guy? Let's take a little look, shall we? After we get a really lucky death door survival. Alright, let's see. It is 100%, 50%, 25%. 5%. We hit every single roll and did 19 self damage. Uh, and the 5% is the one that does 10 damage. So if we hadn't have landed that, he would have gotten quite a bit of healing. But because we landed that, he's now on death door. 
We do land a 17 crit though, so I mean that's yeah, it's nice enough compensation. Now, at this point, he is dead to bleed. We have one. We just need to survive, which luckily goes for six feet under. Um, well, I guess not luckily, but it does prevent us from just flat out dying. I was debating going for a heal here, but decided it would be best if we just stay guarded. So I go for a little bit of damage. It does hit for seven, um, but I wanted him to stay guarded. That's the reason. I feel like he probably would have died. Necromancer's already dead. Oh, I figured, you know what? May as well just go out with style. And we actually landed a crit, so that was pretty nice. okay amount of stuff from that now the main reason like i said earlier is because of the dark spawn gauntlet Go gauntlet goblet we also get a few good um quirks eh, some of them are bad but mostly good Alrighty, but with that being said i believe this is going to be the end of the episode uh sorry if my voiceover is a bit bad I haven't done it for quite some time, but I hope it was good enough. I did a little bit of a mixture between just normal commentary and me voicing over. So let me know how I did. This isn't going to be a, a type of video I make too terribly often, if I can help it. But, you know, it's always good to have a little practice in. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.